Welcome, families, to Nature Storytime at the Harvard Museums of Science and Culture. If you've attended our program before, welcome back. If this is your first time, we're glad you're here. We hope this program engages everyone in your family, from the little kids to the grown-ups. We read picture books that you might find at your local library or at school that connect to something in the museum. First, we'll read the story, then look closely at some science specimens from the teaching collection of the museum. We hope you enjoy today's story. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nature Story Time. I'm so glad you're here today. I want to ask a question. Do you know how to swim? Raise your hand if you know how to swim. Oh, that's great. And maybe some of you are taking lessons right now. And my second question is, have you ever been to a pond? Well, our story today is gonna to take place in New England in a forest pond, a small body of water that's fresh water. Our story is Turtles Race with Beaver. You can see beaver, there's turtle and a fish. And the story is a Native American Seneca story. It was told by Joseph Bruchek and James Bruchek and with pictures by Jose Arruego and Ariane Dewey. And it is published by Dial Books for Young Readers. Turtles Race with Beaver. Have you ever been in a race? Maybe a running race? Well, we'll find out about this race. Oh, here we have a picture of Beaver floating on his back in the pond. Oh, look at that big, thick tail and those webbed feet. Beavers are really good swimmers. Long ago, Turtle lived in a beautiful little pond. How pretty that pond is with the water lilies and the dragonflies. She was very happy because the pond had everything a turtle needed. The water was just deep enough and there was plenty of food to eat and there were lots of nice rocks just above the water for Turtle to sun herself on. One day, as happens every year in the north, winter began to come to the land. As she had done year after year, Turtle swam to the bottom of the pond and buried herself in the thick mud. And that's where she'll spend the winter. While Turtle slept for the winter, Another animal came walking along. It was Beaver who'd been looking for a new home. This will be perfect, said Beaver, once I make some changes. Soon he began doing one of the things beavers do so well. Chomp, chomp, went Beaver as he took down one tree after another to build a big dam. Look at him, chomping and cutting down those trees. He worked hard for many days, and as he did, the water got deeper and deeper. And after finishing his dam, Beaver made himself a fine lodge of mud and sticks, and then settled in for the rest of the winter. Can you see Beaver in there, right inside his lodge? The moons came and went and spring returned once more to the land. The birds sang and the ice melted away. And then Turtle woke up. Crawling out from under the mud, she began to swim toward the surface of the pond. But she had to swim higher and higher and higher and higher. By the time Turtle made it to the surface, she realized that the water was four times as deep as before. Her pond didn't look the same at all. And all of the rocks that she loved to sun herself on were under the water. On one side, the pond stretched as far as her eyes could see. On the other stood a huge dam. And not too far from that was a big round lodge. Wow, a lot of changes. How do you think she feels coming 
out of her winter hibernation and seeing such changes. Then Turtle heard a loud thwack. When she turned to see what the sound had come from, she saw a strange animal swimming toward her. It was Beaver. Who are you? asked Beaver. What are you doing here? I am Turtle, Turtle said. This is my pond. I've lived here all of my life. Your pond, said Beaver. This is my pond. Look at my wonderful dam and my splendid lodge. This is a beaver's pond. Yes, Turtle said. I can see that you've done a lot of work. Couldn't we just share the pond? There's plenty of room. Ha, Beaver laughed. I will not share my pond with any little turtle. But I will challenge you to a race. Whoever wins can stay, and whoever loses must go find a new home. Turtle really didn't want to race. She could see that Beaver, with his big flat tail, was probably a much faster swimmer. But this pond was the only home she knew. I agree, said Turtle. We will race. It was decided that the race would take place the next morning at first light. The two would meet on one side of the pond and race to the other. That night, Beaver told all of the other animals about the race. And word began to spread throughout the forest. Squirrel told Rabbit, and Rabbit told Fox, and Fox told Wolf, and Wolf told Deer, and Deer told Moose, and Moose told Bear, and soon every animal in the forest knew. Before first light came to the land, all of the animals gathered around the pond. As they waited for Turtle and Beaver to arrive, many chose sides, just like cheering for a sports team. Most of the smaller animals, such as Mouse and Chipmunk and Rabbit, sided with Turtle. Most of the bigger animals, such as Wolf and Moose and Bear, sided with Beaver. And as they waited, they began to sing. Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver. You can sing along with me if you want to. We're going to hear that again. They sang even louder when Beaver came swimming over from his lodge and when Turtle popped up from the water. Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver. Turtle and Beaver took their positions on the shore. Bear lifted his big paw in the air. On your mark, get set. Do you know what he says next? Yeah. Go! Splash went Beaver, leaping off from the shore. He was certain he would leave Turtle far behind. But Turtle had gotten an idea. Before Beaver hit the water, Turtle stretched out her long neck, opened her mouth, and bit the end of Beaver's tail. Flap, 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 went Beaver swimming as fast as he could. But as fast as he went, Turtle was right behind, holding on to his tail as hard as she could. It's pretty clever, isn't it? The other animals kept cheering, but now some of the bigger animals were cheering for Turtle instead of Beaver. Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver. Soon, Beaver was halfway across the pond. Even though Turtle was still holding on, it looked as if Beaver would win for sure. And then Turtle bit a little harder into Beaver's tail. Flap, flap, flap. Beaver swam even faster. Turtle still held on, and now more of the animals were cheering for Turtle. Turtle, Beaver. Turtle, 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 turtle. 
Now they were almost to the other side. Beaver still seemed sure to win, but Turtle bit as hard as she could into Beaver's tail. Crunch! Yo! yelled Beaver, and he flipped his big tail up and out of the water. And when his tail reached the highest point, Turtle let go. Whee! sang Turtle as she flew through the air right over Beaver's head. ka thunk Turtle landed on the far shore and crawled across the finish line. Turtle had won the race, and all the animals cheered. Turtle! 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 Turtle was very pleased, but she could see how sad Beaver was. I would still be happy to share my pond, she said. But Beaver was so embarrassed that he left without another word. Poor Beaver, how do you think he feels? Do you feel sad? Over time, Beaver's dam fell apart and the water got shallower and shallower. Turtle had back all her wonderful rocks to sun herself on. As for Beaver, he did find a new home in a pond not too far away. In that pond, though, there also lived a turtle. What do you think he's going to say to that turtle? Can I share your pond with you? Beaver asked. Of course, the other turtle said. And so the two of them lived happily through all the seasons to come. I hope you enjoyed that story of Turtle's Race with Beaver. I think it's kind of silly, but it is really interesting that we do have these animals in our ponds and wetlands here in New England. And so you might have actually seen a turtle or a beaver or a beaver lodge. So let's take a look at some specimens that we have from the museum. This is the shell of a turtle. It's a red-eared slider, one of the turtles that we have around here. And it's not alive, it's just the shell, which is the backbone and the ribs and the front of the turtle skeleton. The rest of the skeleton isn't in here, but I think it's important to know that turtles can't walk out of their shells. They're connected to them. And in fact, if we look inside, can you see that backbone there? That's the backbone of the turtle. So turtles are connected to their shells. And the turtle will hibernate by swimming down and going into the mud of the pond. And they don't eat and they breathe very, very slowly and they just stay there until spring, just like in our story. Turtles live a really long time. So that turtle that is in our story might have been in that pond for 25 years. Now beavers, Beavers are awake all winter long. They don't hibernate. They do have their nice lodge that they build. But beavers are able to swim around even when the water gets icy and there's a lot of snow out because they have very thick fur. The fur, what do you think it feels like? Oh, it feels so soft to me. The one thing that's really cool about beaver fur is that it sheds water. Let's watch this. Here's some water in my little tube and little uh, container. Oh, and if I drop droplets, see how they just, they just ball up into drops and they shake right off. So even though the beaver might be swimming in cold, cold water, he can stay pretty warm. Another part of our story was that the beaver came and cut down trees and built a dam. Beavers really do that. Let's take a look at something very cool. This is part of a tree that was cut down by a beaver. Can you see these little marks here? They match the teeth of the beaver. So beavers have really sharp teeth that are ever growing and they're able to 
cut down trees and branches, and that's how they can build their dams. Here we've got the skull of a beaver. Let's see if we can, here's where his eyes would be, there's where his nose would be. We have his ears up here, right there. And these are his teeth. Take a look at that. And in fact, if we look at the beaver cut wood, we can see that it matches those teeth. Now, it wasn't this particular beaver that was cutting down this tree, but it was another beaver. These teeth are amazing. Look at them. Beavers are rodents. So like other animals that are rodents, rats, mice, they are able to have teeth that grow continuously. They start up here and grow and grow. So if they encounter a very sharp uh, or a very hard piece of wood and the tooth actually breaks down a little bit, it's okay, more tooth will come. Notice what color they are. What color are your teeth? I hope you've been brushing your teeth. Uh, your teeth are probably the color of the teeth inside, kind of a white, maybe ivory color. But on the outside of the beaver's teeth here, there's another layer that's sort of brown. And that layer makes it particularly strong so that beavers don't break their teeth when they bite a tree. I know I couldn't bite that tree without my teeth breaking. So beavers are amazing little engineers and they're able to cut down trees and they're, they're able to chew. These are the chewing teeth back here. Just like we have molars for chewing our, our food, they have these chewing molars so they can chew the um, plant material and that's what they eat. So that's our story about beavers and turtles and we can take a look at our New England Forest Gallery and see some beavers and turtles now. Hope you enjoyed the story. See you next time. Bye.